Back in India. From the minute I came home, nothing went well. When I arrived in Bombay, my family met me at the boat. My brother, Lakshmidas, had some very sad news. I'm sorry to tell you this, Mohandas, but our dear mother is dead. She died when you were in England, but we decided not to tell you until you came home. We know how much you loved her. I just stood there. I was shocked, but I didn't cry. I only cried later when I was alone. For a long time after that, I thought about my mother on many occasions. What would she say about this? Or, mother really liked doing that. The best thing at home was my wonderful son, Harilal. When I returned from England, he was very happy to get to know me again. My older brothers also had several children. So in my first few months in India, I played with them and took them all on long walks. It was the only activity I enjoyed. Our second son, Manilal, was born in 1892 and our family grew. I'm sorry to say I was still horrible to my dear wife, Ba. I fought with her all the time. One day, I even sent her away from my family's hometown, Rajkot, back to her parents' home in Porbandar. But mostly I felt bad because I couldn't earn any money for us. That was because I was a terrible lawyer. The local lawyers in Rajkot were much better than I was. They knew Indian law better than I did and asked for less money. When I finally understood this, I left my family and went to study Indian law in Bombay. I opened a small office there and waited for clients to come, but nobody came. It was a difficult time. Finally, my first client arrived. I didn't want to lose him, so I asked him for only 30 rupees. It was a simple case, but I prepared it very carefully. It was my first appearance in court, so I was very nervous. Please stand up, the clerk said on the first day of the trial. The judge walked into the courtroom and sat down. He looked down at me over his glasses, like a bird about to catch a mouse. Begin, he shouted. I knew I must get up and defend my client. I looked at my notes one last time and stood up, but still I said nothing. Begin, the judge repeated. I opened my mouth to talk, but nothing came out. I drank some water, but it didn't help. I just stood there like an idiot. The people in the courtroom looked at me and began to talk and laugh at me. I felt terrible. Aren't you feeling well? My client whispered to me. No, I'm fine, I whispered back. Then talk, he said a little angry. Everybody is waiting for you. Again, I tried to talk. I knew exactly what to say, but nothing came out. After a few minutes, I sat down. I was humiliated. Finally, the clerk announced a new day for the case and my client got himself a different lawyer. I, of course, returned his money. This was a very difficult moment for me. The truth is I've always been afraid of a courtroom. I'm a very shy person and I find it hard to talk in public. I finally understood that I had a real problem. How can I ever be a lawyer if I can't speak in court? I thought to myself. Things became even worse. My brother, Lakshmidas, imagined I was going to do great things when I came home and bring riches and fame to the family. He paid for all my studies and I owed him everything. So I tried to help him, but I couldn't do that either. Lakshmidas was the secretary to the future king of Purbander. He hoped to become the next prime minister of this little state like our father and grandfather. But he made a mistake and fought with a British political agent. Since I knew the agent from my days in London, Lakshmidas asked for my help. Please talk to him, Mohandas, he asked. I didn't know the agent very well, but I decided to try. The agent was very cold. If your brother has a problem, he should come and talk to me, he said. I couldn't be quiet. I talked and talked, but he didn't listen to me. He became very angry. Go away now! 
He finally shouted. So in the end, I made things even worse for my brother. This was another problem for me. I didn't know how to talk to important people. I thought logical arguments were enough, but they weren't. It's very important to speak politely to these people and tell them how wonderful they are. It's very hard for me to do that, especially if I don't think they're so wonderful. Since my career as a lawyer was not successful, I looked for other kinds of work because I really needed money. I tried to get a job as a teacher in a school in Bombay, but they didn't want me. I was becoming desperate. Then I discovered I could write petitions to government offices. Many Indian people couldn't read or write and wanted my help with this. So I did that for 300 rupees a month. It wasn't a lot of money, and it certainly wasn't much fun, but at least I had a job. But then something exciting happened, and I was forced to make an important decision. A Muslim businessman from Porbandar offered me a job for a year to fight a legal case for him in South Africa. I thought it over for a while and then decided to take the job because I wanted to find a new direction.